Bettenswerk. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Betty Slab video. Today we're gonna make threads. And in specific, we're gonna make camera threads, quarter inch. So I have a camera right here, and you're probably, you might wonder yourself, well, does it fit now? Does it work? Well, watch the entire video and see for yourself how this is being made. Learn the ins and outs of using the lathe and cutting threads and also see the result for yourself in the end. So please enjoy watching. Okay, so in order to make the threads for the camera mount, we have a few parameters that are really important. So we have a nominal diameter in inches of a quarter inch because we're gonna make a quarter inch screw. Then we have 20 threads per inch, which is another representation of the pitch, so this can correspond to a pitch and the other way around. I'm metric, so I'm gonna use the diameter in millimeters, which is 6.35. And the pitch, which corresponds to the 20 threads per inch, is 1.27 millimeters. So basically, the distance between two threads. Now I'm gonna show you the sch schematic overview of what a thread would look like. So we have TPI of 20, so it's an important setting on the lathe. So you can either set the pitch or you can use a different standard, which, which I will do, that will actually set the TPI. So I'm using a British standard. It's uh, using the imperial system. So I can set this number actually to 20 instead of uh, having to use this pitch. It's called UTS, so Unified Thread Standard. So basically describing all the threads uh, that you can make with this. We have here, a label that says D major, so that was 6.35, so a quarter inch in our case. So that's not this radius here, because this is revolved around the uh, axis of the screw. So basically it's the diameter of the screw. That's uh, the 6.35. Then we see H everywhere on this uh, schematic as well as P, but P we know, H we do not. Um, basically H describes a trigonometric relation because this is an angle of 60 degrees and then with some math you can derive this to a single scalar number and you multiply that with your pitch. So when we actually do that with the pitch for the camera threads that we're going to make, this uh, corresponds to 1.010 millimeters, so 1.1 millimeters. So that's our H value. But the thing is, if we consider this as our uh, cutting insert, we basically start here and not above here. So basically the distance that we need to travel with our cutting insert is not H, but it's H minus this little bit here, which corresponds to 7 divided by 8 times H. So that's the distance that we need to cover with our cutting tool. So we start at the outside of our blank and then we move 7 divided by 8 times H into the material. So this number actually corresponds to 0 0.96 millimeters approximately. So we know the TPI, we know how far we need to take a cut into the material, we know the diameter of the material, which is basically this entire red uh, line with the two arrows on there, so 6.35 millimeters. We know the flank angle, so basically the angle between the sides of a thread, and with all these parameters we can move to the lathe and actually uh, convert this theory into an nice, hopefully nice fitting uh, threads that can uh, screw into our camera. So hop on board the lathe train and I will see you at the lathe. Okay, we're here at the lathe, as you can see. So we're gonna move up close to the threading chart. And basically what you can see in metric, there is no 1.27 millimeter pitch available to us. So actually we're gonna use a Whitbird, British standard, based on Imperial, which has the 20 threads per inch. 
which we need to make this camera screw. So it's CW4, which I set the levers to CW, and then this number here is 4. So in order to make our blank to size, you're going to put this handle to uh, actual the, the automatic carriage feed, which will not use this threaded rod right here, but this uh, hex uh, rod right there in the middle. Uh, because this is actually coupled to a, a mechanical end stop which will disengage the clutch and will prevent this entire carriage from uh, crashing into uh, in the machine itself. We will set the speed to the highest speed possible and then we're not going to touch the rest for now because we first need to uh, turn the blank to size. So 7.84, so we need to turn it down at 1.50 millimeter. Now 6.35, this is exactly the diameter we need. Well now you can see we basically have the rough diameter ready. And the only thing we need to cut with this uh, type of chisel is the relief. Okay, now for the relief, which is basically going to draw what we have right now. So we have a little stump hanging out of the tree jaw chuck together with the part that we turned down. So this diameter is 6.35 millimeter. But now if we come in with the treading tool, we basically need somewhere for the treading tool to go to. So we need to cut a little groove out here. And this groove needs a certain depth. And this depth basically needs to be this 7 8 multiplied by h, which was the 0 0.96 millimeters. In order for the for the cutting tool to go somewhere and actually uh, it We'll make sure that the threads that you cut on here, that they basically are consistent all the way. So you don't have any location where you need to stop. You just move till you are at the um, resting location. You back the chisel off, so you actually retract it, and then you move the entire carriage back, and then increase the cutting depth, and then do this over and over again till you have the correct depth, which was again. 0 0.96 millimeters okay this is basically after cutting and as you can see we created in here a small relief so what I did was I found the zero location so basically you let the lathe spin the point of the t chisel of the insert touches the material then you set your cross feed dial to zero so basically you can turn this inner ring without turning the other ring so you have zero here zero there and then what I did I was cutting twice the depth of the 0 0.96 that was required because this is basically indicating the diameter that you're going to reduce instead of the actual movement which I explained before so now we're going to switch for the treading insert and show you what we're going to do next. Okay, now I have the treading insert in here, which you can see has a different shape. I'll put some Sharpie on the edge of the blank. And what we're now going to do is set this lever to go to the uh, Acme spindle, which is this threaded rod here. And it's not going in there all the way because the gears are a little bit misaligned. But if I turn the machine on, it will go in there. Then we're gonna engage the half nut, which will basically 
engage the half knot with this uh, threaded rod in order for us to actually have the correct uh, pitch or threads per inch and we're going to turn the brake on and this will make sure that whenever we stop the lathe by putting this in a neutral position that this thing will basically come to a complete stop within a matter of uh, milliseconds because basically if you let this thing run and you have a little small area for your uh, treading insert to stop you basically don't want it to overshoot and hit the other side or crash into uh, crash into the jaw also we need to make sure that there is plenty of space so this thing will not hit the mechanical end stop before the actual treading tool is inside of the safe uh, safe position so actually with this top sled we can kind of like dial it in there so more 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 so now if you have a look this basically is now almost in the center of the resting position so slightly more slightly more so now it's in the center of the resting position and then this is not touching so we don't get any collisions and now we are actually going to cut the threads so we need to find the center before we do that so this tool needs to be zeroed so we let the tool touch the work and then this dial we're going to set to zero and then we know this is zero that is zero cutting depth and then what we do is we move in increments of tenths of a millimeter in order to achieve this depth but we have to realize that whenever we set this thing to each mark that it's actually uh, plunging in half of the set length that you define on the dial so long story for short, we basically need to go twice as far as the given number on this paper. So basically we need to go for almost two millimeters on this dial in order for this tool to go in for one millimeter. So let's do it. So important, we need to set the, the speed of the lathe to a much lower speed than we did for the actual uh, reducing the blank to size because this is all manual uh, actions and you want to make sure that you don't crash anything so go really slow Okay, a small side note, it's really important that this surface right here is parallel to the face of your three jaw chuck. So therefore your actual insert will make a 60 degree, but also in the middle, so perpendicular to your stock that you're trying to uh, tread. Okay, so I'll now shortly film what kind of movement I do with my hands. So basically I engage the depth a little bit, so per tenths of a millimeter with this dial. Then I let the machine run by lifting this lever. And then at the location of my resting position, so basically where you have the relief cut, I turn this back and I push this down and then basically everything will move back. So now the thread cutting is actually complete, so we uh, achieved the required cutting depth and uh, the threads as you can see are really sharp, but the thing is this 
diameter usually always comes out larger than is required because the this this tool kind of will push a little bit of material outwards so this is slightly larger than the 6.35 millimeters required but this is not a problem so what we do basically we what we do we disengage the half nut so we have basically manual control and as you can remember this dial was set to an initial zero so that's where we started the cutting so basically when this dial goes to zero again then this tool should also be at the required diameter of 6.35 so what we can do is basically put the lathe in one of the fastest gears let it spin and then take another skin pass with this set to zero so your initial position and this diameter should then perfectly be your 6.35 and it might be wise to actually take off a little bit more so maybe like make it 6.30 so then you take off half a tenth but that's up to you in order to make the fit and finish uh, perfect so i took off one tenth of a millimeter on top of the original cut of course which would bring it to 6.35 so now it should be close to 6.25 6.19 well that's good enough because if you make this oversized then basically it won't fit inside of the threads of your camera and will probably bind or ruin something so the only thing left to do is the threads are quite sharp right now so we need a bit of um, scotch bright paper or bit of like what it's called like sanding cloth in order to uh, kind of deburr the edges a little bit so we're gonna get that right now okay so basically what we're gonna do this uh, cutting insert has a 30 degree angle here so what we're gonna do manually place it here then let the lathe go spin and then very gently with the edge we're going to take away this burr here in up front and also make a small 30 degree chamfer on there in order for the screw to easily uh, thread into the camera so we're going to do it right now Okay, now we have the threads taken out of the lathe, so with a nice chamfer on there, deburred with the uh, sanding cloth, and here we have a camera, so we're going to try if it fits, and it does actually fit pretty nice, it's a little bit on the loose side, but that could be the cause of the uh, diameter that we reduced to 6.20 instead of 6.35, and what we also can do is reduce our cutting depth a little bit from 0 0.96 to some little less value so for example 0 0.90 or something so both ways you can reduce and increase the tightness of uh, a pair of threads but this was a success and as always thanks for watching and remember just try to DIY